verse number four. And uh, as we look there, and I'll give you time to get page if you're looking in the Bible and not looking at the screen, and you can look either way, uh, the Bible points out and makes it very plain what John's mission was. And uh, Brother uh, Perry, if you please, let's hear that, Mark 1-4. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of what? Repentance, which meant that, but with his baptism and prior to it, he had to prepare some hearts. And that is, get the people to turn to God and turn from their evil ways. Say amen. So that was his mission. He came preaching the kingdom of God and preaching repentance for the remission of sins. Yeah. Let me say just a word about that for mission of remission of sins. You see, his was a punctilia action. It was futuristic, pointing toward the blood yeah. that would be shed. It was for the remission. But there was no remission until the blood was shed. Yeah. Say amen. amen. Somebody says, is that your own opinion or is that from the book of God? I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah. Back to the Bible. All right. Yeah. yeah. And we want to know this now. In Hebrews 9, 22, the Bible says over there, for almost all things were by the law purged with blood. But without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Amen. Say amen. amen. Almost all things. Back in the Old Testament, they used ceremonially water. And they used fire. But if you're going to get remission of sins, you got to deal with the blood. Yeah. Say amen. amen. Isn't that good? Yeah. And so the Bible is right. But then look with me in Matthew 3, verses 1 to 11. As we exegete that and look and see what God's will is, in Matthew 3, in those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you to where the Lord make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leather girdle about his lawn. His meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him, get this, Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and was baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. All right, so they had to confess, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to whose baptism? His baptism. So John had a baptism, you see, and his subjects were believing Jews. And he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. I imagine if I came out like that, uh, you all be trying to get rid of me. Ah. If I called you a bag of snakes, say amen. Yeah. So I would call those people a bag of snakes, say amen. Yeah. Sometimes the preacher got to tell it like it is, yeah. say amen. Yeah. And he says, but uh, you bring forth therefore fruit for repentance. And think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our fathers, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Right. So what is he saying? If you're going to have a good uh, tree, you got to have a good root. That's right. Say it that. Right. Something wrong with the root, right. something wrong with the tree. Right. And uh, he said in verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water. That was the element of his baptism. Was water, it was not Holy Ghost. But unto repentance, but he that cometh after me, is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not wearing the better. Yeah. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Yeah. The fire will be the eternal destruction that was coming upon the wicked. Can you all say amen? amen? But John the Baptist had a mission as a matter of fact. And Jesus came out to him to be baptized of him. We'll find that in Matthew 3, uh, commencing with verse 13. Jesus from Galilee and that province to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. 
But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me? And Jesus answered, verse 15 is going to be pivotal, unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Amen. Then he suffered, which is a word meaning he allowed him. And when Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting up on him. And lo, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I submit to you that to try on me all the three persons of the Godhead sanctioned the baptism of Jesus. That's good. Now, although he came out to John, one man said to me one time that he came to a Baptist. No, he didn't come to a Baptist. He came to the Baptist. Say amen. amen. Yeah, he came to the Baptist. Why? Because he was the baptized. Say amen. amen. And when he walked out to John to be baptized of John, then all of the Godhead sanctioned because the Holy Spirit descended as a dove. Then on his shoulder. And the Father spoke from heaven. And the Son is in the water. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And the Son of God is being baptized not for the remission of sins. He didn't have to confess like those that came to John because he had no sense to confess. Somebody said, well, Brother Foster, why then was he baptized? I believe he was baptized to show us an example. And another thing, the Bible says to fulfill our righteousness, which was to complete the Old Testament scripture. Say amen. And uh, the son of the living God, baptism was a burial. And he was buried because he went down in the water and came straight way up out of the water. Which shows that uh, it prefigured then his burial. And one day he would be in the heart of the earth, but only one second. Yeah, good. Good. From the grave. Can you all say that? Yeah. So the Bible is right. He would get up from the grave. And John baptized where there was much water. Yeah. Yeah. John 3.23, let's look at that and see what the Bible has to say. And then I've got to move on because I have a long ways to go. And a short time to get there. But in John 3, 23, the Bible says what? John was also baptizing in Eden near Salem because there was a little water there. Enough to do some sprinkling. Enough to do some pouring. There was much water there. Say amen. Why? Because John was immersing people and it was far looking toward Calvary, the remission of sin. But uh, the fact we need to recognize is that John's baptism uh, did not, that Jesus did not confess any sins. He didn't have uh, any sins to confess or repent of any sins. He had no sins to repent of. But uh, he was a spotless lamb of God, which meant he was sinless. Look with me in John 1, 28 and 29. When he came to Beth Bower, and uh, as he came out uh, on the banks of the Jordan to be baptized of John the Baptist, John saw him coming, walking on the banks, and he pointed him out and said, Behold, here comes the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Say amen. And then in 1 Peter 1, I'm taking you now, and I want you to stay with me, verses 18 through 20, to show the sinlessness of the Christ. The Bible says, for as much as you know, that you are not redeemed, what you mean redeemed? That meant you were not purchased with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a man without blood, without spot, and without blemish, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. But manifested in these last times for you. So we are dealing with the spotless Lamb of God. Amen. And his name was Jesus. Say amen if you can. Amen. And so then, I want you to know 
as we move on now. And uh, to, to reject the baptism now of the Great Commission today is to reject God's dividing line Amen. between the old life and the new life. Right. Baptism has always been the dividing line between lost folk and saved folk. Let's go way back in the book of God to Exodus chapter 14, 21 through 28. I will summarize some of that narrative in order to end right there. But uh, here the Israelites uh, are in, uh, uh, fleeing from the Egyptians. The Egyptians were in hot pursuit. They came before the Red Sea. It seemed to have been no way out. Uh, the pillar of cloud that had gone before them uh, went behind them. And the angel that went in the front of them is behind them to have their back. God was able to, to program, to program the divine power to protect his people. Yeah. But they were afraid because uh, Pharaoh and his army came with 600 chosen chapters. Yeah. That they were to overtake them. And the people were afraid. And Moses told them, fear not, stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. Is that right? He said, For the Egyptians that you've seen today, you will see no more forever. Because God is on our side. Lift up your hand and stretch out your rock. He did that. God called the east wind to blow all night long. Made a highway down through the Red Sea. Children of Israel went across on dry ground. And the Bible is going to show now that. Uh, when he stretched the rod back, the waters came together upon the Egyptians. And the Bible said that not a one of them was left alive. Yeah. So then we have to recognize that uh, that was a type of baptism. Yeah. Somebody said you can't prove it. Back to the Bible. Uh, well, First Corinthians chapter 10 verses 1 to 4. It was a type. One group was lost because they didn't go according to God's counsel. But uh, another group was saved because they lost according to God's cats. Say amen. amen. Now the Bible says, as we look now in 1 Corinthians 10, commencing with verse 1. Over, brother. Over, brother. I will not have you to be ignorant. How that all our fathers were under the, were under the cloud. And were all passed through the sea. And were all baptized under Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drink of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Say amen. That is what God said. It was a baptism. Because they were baptized unto Moses under the cloud and in the sea. Say amen. amen. So then it was a type of baptism, and that was a dividing line between the lost folk and the saved folk. Amen. So those that went by the counsel of God were saved, and those that did not were lost. Number two, as I speedily uh, go on, the steps of a child of God should be ordered by the wisdom of God. Amen. Now we notice that Luke 7 35, I want to look at that with you. Because we need to get an understanding of that. Luke 7 and verse number 35. And let's read it, Brother Perry. But the rhythm is justified of all her children. The Bible said, Wisdom is justified of all her children. Amen. In other words, those that were obedient followed God's pattern of wisdom. But those that were not obedient, then when they came out to John, he refused to baptize. Amen. He told him, told him to bring some fruit. That was worthy of, uh, of, uh, of the, to be baptized. Uh, meat for repentance. Fruit, meat for repentance. Say amen. amen. And so you have two groups of people. The obedient ones and the disobedient ones. And so then we need to be with the obedient ones. Amen. Somebody said that means not uh, as uh, Elvis Presley sang near the end of his, his life when he was given to drugs and all of that. And, uh, and Sammy Davis Jr. did the same thing as saying that uh, I did it my way. Oh, I'm here to tell you it's not our way. Well, it's God's way. Yeah. Can you all say amen? amen. We've got to do it God's way Free. and not our way. The Bible says in Psalms 37, 23 through 25, and I want you to notice that with me. 
as the book of Psalms.